here to afford the county ample time to stabilize bus operation and ridership resulting in the pandemic and conduct a new procurement. Uh, specifically, for the period of March 1st through, the, through June 7th, the county has requested a reduction of service of 25% of the fixed route service due to the emergency. Transdev has operated on a Saturday plus service, lengthening service intervals on most lines and adjusting for high demand or crowding with supplemental runs. This reduction has allowed Transdev to meet the reduction levels, to meet the reduced levels of demand while maintaining social distances and accommodating the needed COVID-related cleaning and disinfecting requirements. Service has returned to pre-COVID levels as of yesterday. Uh, the county is also requesting that Transdev suspend fare collection effect effective March 23rd as part of the effort to reduce the spread of the virus. Fair collection is expected to be reinstated sometime towards June 27th. Uh, related temporary adjustment to transit's variable rate for fixed route service is included in the amendment to allowing the county to pay transit the full amount in accordance with the rates and hours anticipated in the 2020 annual budget and plan. Um, the county will be receiving $33 million of CARES Act, which will help supplement the, uh, will take care of this uh, shortfall of revenue. Uh, the contract extension, the current contract expires 12-31 of 21. This agreement puts forth a two-year extension to the contract with a new expiration date of 12-31-23. An RFP was initiated to solicit a new operator. Uh, we have told that uh, solicitation during the emergency to see where we are, and we will be either reinstating that same solicitation or putting out a separate new one. Um, Part of the two-year um, extension is for the procurement plus the transition period if a new operator is chosen, which typically takes about 12 months to fo fully integrate a new operation. Legislative Bino. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Good afternoon, Mr. Arnold. Um, I have some questions, and I, I want to start with the timeline for the RFP. Yes. So you, you state that it would take 12 months to do a transition? Yes. Okay. And you have that, ex you know that based on previous experience? That talking, to both, talking to my technical staff and previous experience, yes, it takes about 12 months to run. If a new operator was chosen to get him up and running. Mm -hmm. And so we think that we need 12 months to transition and we would need how long for the procurement process? Is Another 12 months. Another 12 months. So it would be two years. So the, del the reason that you're asking for the extension is because we believe that right now wouldn't be a good time to go out and we don't think that there's enough time on the contract. That's what That's you're saying? Yeah, right now is not a good time to go out. I mean, transit operations are in flux. We don't know what ridership will look like. It's hard for anybody to propose on a system when we, in the middle of the pandemic. In addition, most of the staffs associated with putting together a proposal are probably in the midst of running their current operations with all the different requirements and needs that they have. Okay, because based on the timeline that you've provided, the 24 months, means that we should have gone out long before COVID was even an issue. We did, we did go out before COVID. We did? Yes. Okay. And, and we told and we told the procurement. We, we paused it. So the, the bid was out? Yes. Okay. And there was no response at all? Well, it was in the, it was in the process of gathering information. We had not received it back yet. It was out to the vendors to put together a proposal package. We had not received any proposals. When did that go out? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I believe around January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. And then so this extension, even if we were to say, if you said you need 24 months to do this, wouldn't a one year extension be enough? Well, you have to, you need any contract from start to finish right now is taking between 9 and 11 months. And right, this would probably be more complicated one because of the type of contract that it is to negotiate. Um, so you're talking a minimal, I think, a year of the procurement process alone once we initiate and put the RFP back out. Uh, I don't think we're looking to put the RFP back out until probably we know where we are sometimes towards the end of the year. And then we have a month, uh, we have a, a one year phase in if there's a new operator. I mean, alone. I believe what, um, what I've been told is just to register the vehicles properly is a three-month operation working with DOT and the FHWA, I mean, I mean FTA. So we're, we're, we feel uh, one year is a sufficient amount of time to put the operation up if we see a new operator come on. Mm -hmm. And then so 
this contract or well, this extension um, would well I don't feel that we didn't have enough time built in anyway I think if we went out in January we're still cutting it kind of close but in any event um, January I think that would have given me two years wouldn't it no because you were only getting you were only getting responses right you weren't even getting responses at that point no, they, they still had the package no would it give me a two years all of 21 No, that's correct. Yes. Okay. So we're already having a, a problem because I have a letter that indicates that you, in fact, did reduce staff. And that date, well, what, that letter is dated May 27th. Right. So, so that, that was really, so that was really a miscommunication on my behalf. This, uh, this extension I assumed was going to be done earlier than it is currently now being done, which is great. Um, 
So our drivers that were given, uh, there were 16 drivers that were part-time drivers that were given layoff. They were paid last week, um, so they haven't missed a paycheck. Uh, assuming we, we can move forward, we can certainly bring those drivers back now um, and, and keep them on, on, on salary until, uh, until demand allows us to uh, fully put them behind the wheel again. Yeah, because the letter actually it doesn't say layoff. It says that your position has been eliminated, and as of May 30th, you're terminated. And so there was nothing that communicated to these employees that this was a, a layoff. Well, yeah, they, they were on furlough for, for a while. Many of the drivers, again, we have 115 drivers on the paratransit side. Only 40 are actually working currently um, because of demand. Uh, as more and more trips come back, those drivers that are on what we call paid leave would, would continue to service uh, service the demand as it grows. Uh, Part-time drivers, based on what we see as demand, may take a long time to come back. Um, we, again, a miscommunication, my fault. Uh, letters went out early. Uh, again, these drivers have not lost a paycheck, and we can certainly bring them back onto uh, paid status starting today. Uh, we did also give drivers the option this is paratransit drivers, the option to come to the fixed route side, train as a fixed route operator, and fill in some of the holes we have on the fixed route side. So I, I think, I don't know how you say it's a misunderstanding or miscommunication. This is it's a pretty big issue to have miscommunicated on. Um, you have 16 people that were, were informed via letter that they didn't receive at their homes. In many cases, I'm hearing until June 3rd. Um, some of them showed up on June 1st for shifts. They thought they were coming to work and they were told that they were terminated. Um, I, and, you, and you're getting paid for the service from the county. So I'm really at a loss as to why this even occurred. It, it just, it's not sitting well with me. And then to have a contract, an extension request come through where it, you specifically say that you're not going to terminate staffers and then we learn if that's if that person hadn't called my office on Friday we potentially would have never known that this even occurred that there was a reduction well, well I, I yeah I, I'm not sure that that's the case legislator uh, I I will tell you this is a very fluid situation currently um, we're trying to stay ahead ahead of everything. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, working with the governor's office, uh, working with, with local and working with our union. Um, uh, again, I, I think this was a matter of poor timing on my behalf. Um, obviously, like I said, none of these drivers missed a paycheck. Uh, and, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we, we can bring them back today uh, if the county is, is, uh, is, is, is uh, agreeable to that. We'll bring them back today and, and nothing will be missed. The, the drivers, I, I don't know of any drivers that actually showed up for a shift because we're not calling drivers in because there's no work. Um, so I, I would have a hard time understanding that. But again, with the fluid situation, I think we handled it as well as we could. Could there have been, been things done better? Probably. And, and again, uh, that, that's, that's my fault. I, I don't uh, believe to be perfect in this situation. It's certainly a, a, a situation that must have been through before. So I'm, I'm hearing, I just want to clarify, I want to reiterate, so I'm, I'm sure that I heard you correctly, you are going to bring those drivers back and effective today. Exactly, yeah. We would bring the drivers back uh, ideally right away, uh, and they literally, they could begin, they, they won't miss a paycheck uh, at all. Okay, and um, we're going to make sure that we honor that clause in that contract, which is that you will not reduce staff moving forward. I understand that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have no more questions. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes? 
Th thanks for the information, Commissioner Arnold. Uh, just uh, I, along the same lines as the questions of uh, Legislator Bynell, I don't understand the need for an additional two-year um, addition to the time frame. Uh, you've laid out that you need 24 months to be able to do it. Um, it seems as though the extension is, is one year more than is absolutely necessary. I have many questions about the, the service that uh, TransDev has provided, and I don't simply want to give a pass on being able to ask those questions as part of the new, part of the new F RFP process for another two years. Um, so I, I would be much more comfortable with it being only a one-year extension as opposed to a two-year extension. Um, and I would suggest to the administration, and I know, uh, as, as the county executive made perfectly clear, we're only part-time legislators, so she may or may not have to listen to us. Uh, but I, I would ask that you take back to the administration that um, I, I certainly have no intention. She still needs my vote. Um, I have no intention of supporting it if it's a two-year extension. Um, so I would, I would suggest that, that um, they consider a one-year extension instead. Let's let Schaefer. Commissioner, hi. hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify again. If you, if you were to say get it, get one year, that is sufficient. You're comfortable with that? One year, one year extension? extension? Yeah. No, we need to need one year for the procurement. And then, if we have a new operator, we feel you need a year to transition the new operator in. Okay, but so. Are you saying you wouldn't be putting out, you wouldn't be putting the, the RFP out again until January of 2021 if we were to give you a one year ex extension or e either way? When do you anticipate well, in putting if, it out? If, we're, if, we, if we only had a one year extension and this contract expired at the end of 22, we, we may have, we would have to put out the procurement earlier than we wanted to in this uh, changing economy of uh, tran transit, which we don't think that's a good idea at this time. That's what we feel that waiting till the end of the year to, to reissue the RFP will have a better understanding of where transit is headed and the, um, the um, and also where, where the COVID the diseases of vaccination, whatever happens, will give us a better understanding of our world we live in on this. Well, the current uh, contract uh, ends when? End of 2021? Yes. Okay. So that's, I mean, I understand what you're saying with, but you'd have that full year if you were to say put the RFP out, you know, beginning of next year or end of this year, and then if it was extended another year, you'd have till the end of 2022, correct? No, you need, you need a full year for procurement that's and a full year of transition. Right, that's why full you, year of procurement. That's why we're looking for two years, two, two additional years. But couldn't 2021 be your full year of procurement and 2022 be your full year of, right. with the one year extension, yeah, do you, you have 31 months. Right, regardless, is there any way to um, utilize, you know, the time for, I, I understand things are, are right now changing and you're not sure where everything is going, but isn't there any, any way to utilize the time now in that process somehow? Whether it's putting the RFP out sooner rather than later and, you know, knowing that it's not, things aren't going to really start until things are secure and, and stable out here in COVID land. Again, it, it, it's, a, it's, change, it's a changing environment. We don't right now. We're back. We're back loading the buses to keep the operators away from the, the passengers. Mm -hmm. You know, will, will that be something we have to do again in, in the winter? Or you know, are we going to see a changing um, uh, bus routes because of the uh, the emergency? Is the railroad going to lose service and is going to be transitioned to the bus system? Mm -hmm. All that stuff has, is in transition, and that's why we, we're not looking to put the procurement route out this second. We want to see where everything lays mm -hmm. and move forward from that. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I'm just not understanding the math or whatever, but if you need a year for the procurement and you put, put it out, even if you waited and put it out the end of December or January, you have all of 21. An extension would give you all of 22 to whatever happened in 21. If you had someone, if you, you know, you needed some type of training or whatever, you'd have all of 22. Right. Somehow, <clears throat> I don't know. It could, could be, could, I could have misspoke. Maybe the, 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 the thought process, I have to go back to talk to my team. The thought process is waiting until the spring to re-procure it once the winter's passed. Maybe that's why there's a, I might have misspoken saying January. 
they might be thinking more of the spring when we get past another winter of the of an operation to see where we sit. I'd have to go back. I'd go back to my team and let me. I'd have to confirm that that's what their thinking was. Okay, so I, I see your confusion because if I if we go back.